but she look good. You ain't gotta stand Hello, Spokane, and welcome to Ever Real Talks. This is Jessica Sign. And I'm Matt Side. And we are here in August, August 2020. Guess what? What? Summer's almost over. I can't stand it when he says that. That's the only reason. It's true. I mean, give it Stop a few it. more weeks. Well, here's the reality is that summer's never ending because kids aren't even going back to school in September. Well, so some of our y'all kids are will. ready for some homeschooling. <laughs> we don't have to get into that right now. Let's actually talk about our featured home of the week. Featured home of the week. Yes. 3912 mm-hmm. East 7th Avenue. Uh, this property actually is a three bedroom, two bath house. Mm-hmm. It was uh, built in 1991. 1,540 square feet. $249,000 is our price point on this, okay. which is a hot price point. There's just not a lot of house out there for that yes, price. It's very Some true. of the cool things about this property is it has a new furnace in 2018, so it's only two years old. There's a brand new water heater. Uh, has a really good sized backyard with uh, like privacy fencing and stuff mm-hmm, on it. Uh, mm-hmm. Large back deck, sprinkler system. Really close access to the freeway, uh, shopping from Fred Meyer to Trader Joe's within a few minutes. Yeah. So uh, it's a great property. You can check it out on our Facebook page and look at all the different pictures. And if you're interested in that property, we'd love to show it to you. You can send us a message or give us a call. Give us a call at 509-62-HOUSE. That's 509-62-HOUSE. Seriously, he gets I'm into on. this like lounge lizard kind I'm of thing. I'm on the it's radio. Like, Come I on. know you are, honey, but not a radio where you're trying to like, I don't know. Sorry, I won't even go there. Anyway, that's our featured house. <laughs> um, take a look, and we'd love to help you take a look at it if you're interested. Jess, let's talk about real estate. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was we've talked a lot over the past months around the importance of a buyer's agent and, and in this really competitive market, mm-hmm. having an, an expert agent that has experience and knows how to be strategic and putting offers together. And I think yep. sometimes in a really strong seller's market, we forget to talk about how important it is to have an experienced and strategic list agent. Yes. Because an inexperienced agent is going to stick a sign in the yard and they're going to get offers, but are they still leaving money on the table? Yes. Well, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong during a real estate transaction. So um, let's just talk about it a little bit. I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of talk about the things that for me are important, the things that I like to try and do. And I think that I, I train my agents to do. Uh, and, the, and the first thing, I've got some notes here. And the first thing that I, I would say if you're interviewing list agents is, first of all, are they getting to know you? And I know that sounds kind of funny and silly and maybe inconsequential, but you have to understand that you, your house is not disconnected from you. Um, and I don't care if that is an investment property or if that's the home you've lived in for the last 40 years, that home is connected to who you are and it's connected to your goals. And so sure. I think it's really, really important that you under, you, you ha- this person approaches you as an individual. Right. And, and it approaches you as an individual who, yes, has a commodity to sell, but that there is a personal connection there. Well, and it's not just an emotional connection. Yeah, like, that's no. not what you're speaking about. It's like just simply the approach mm-hmm. and it, goals are a really important way to say that, right? Yeah. Like what's important to you is not going to be important to me or somebody else. And the reasons why someone is selling are so different from, from person to person. And I, I always ask, tell me a little bit about why you're selling. Tell me about when you want to sell. Tell me about... Um, you know, the best way that I can communicate with you. Like I, I might be used to a certain way of communicating, but you know, what time of the day isn't good for you? What kind of, you know, do you like text? Do you like email? Do you both want to be on the email chain? Sometimes I find that some couples, the only one of them is going to be kind of um, dealing with some of the stuff, you sure. know? And so I just think that's really important. And if your person approaches you like a number um, or they approach you um, and they're not, all they care about is the house, I think that that can be a little bit of a red flag because I think that you want them to understand you as a whole person. Well, I um, think that you've had a couple of transactions recently that are on opposite extremes. And, and obviously, I'm not going to give out personal information, but I know one particular client that they fell in love with one of the buyers and it didn't matter if other buyers were coming in or even offering more money. Like they wanted to sell to that person 
versus a different client who's like, well, how do we maximize profitability here and get the most for our money? And if you right. didn't know who they were, that's right. you might be trying to talk buyer A into taking a higher price when buyer A really wanted to be able to transfer the family property, the family home, to another family that they cared about or felt an emotional connection to or something like that. Right. Yeah, so you got to understand what those... Because then, then they could go off and pushing you in a, in a direction that is not good for they you. They being the real estate professional. And, of course, you don't know that at the very beginning. Like, I didn't know that that was going to happen. But by being, some, by being an agent who cares about the person and not just the house, you learn those things along the way and you listen. Um, and, you know, I mean, I always ask my clients, what are the top three things you're looking for in a real estate professional? And you do get a lot of um, similar... Um, answers for that but like I got one recently where they said it's I like to take my time to make a decision and I really don't like to feel pushed so anytime I had a conversation with that person sure. I, I said why not I give her all the information I said why don't you think about it and get back to me now there are times when I I had to say they need an answer by this time sure. But I wasn't making her make a decision on the phone with me because I, I needed to understand the way she needed to make decisions. I think it's important to note that that's important enough to us that even if you know us really well, we're going to ask that question. Yeah. Because it, it helps you as the consumer and the client think about it yourself. Because yes. the reality is, is I don't think any of us sometimes know what we want until we have a moment to think about it. That's right. Absolutely. So then, the, so getting to know you. The second thing is pretty obvious, getting to know the house. You do want somebody who's interested in all the little things about your home and asks, asks you questions and understands your house so that they can sell it, they can answer questions, um, and they can honestly kind of love your house. Maybe not to the extent that you love your house, but love it enough to give it its very best moment in the in the spotlight. Sure. Um, obviously, so beyond that, having a great marketing plan. Make sure they actually have a plan. Yeah, if you're interviewing a real estate <laughs> professional that's going to be helping you sell your home, yeah. like just ask that question. What is your marketing plan? Yeah. Because we have 2,500 real estate professionals mm -hmm. in the market right now, and a significant portion of them don't have a marketing plan other than the sign in the MLS. Right. And, and I think if you're paying for a service, you deserve more than that. Yeah. Just make sure they actually have a plan. And that, that there's a lot of things we can go into. We won't go into all of that right now. Um, another thing you need, they need to know their forms. I did, I actually counted today. There are 196 statewide forms. There are six not pa pages, actual no different actual documents. different documents. Um, six pamphlets and 14 Spokane specific addenda that you can use. Um, and you want <laughs> what I call a uh, forms chemist because just like in chemistry, this substance and this substance you put them together, it makes something great, but this substance and this substance makes an explosion. And the same thing is true with forms. They interact with each other because of the way they're written. And so you want to make sure you know that someone knows how those forms interact. That That's a good analogy. Thank you. That they're constantly um, uh, updating their knowledge and that they are um, figuring out what is the best case because no two transactions are the same. And there's, there are special needs in different transactions and you've got to use different forms and there are different ways to terminate transactions and you need their time frames. There's so many things and that is our job. Right. Our job is to make sure, I mean, if nothing else, our job is to make sure that we use the right forms and you understand what those forms right. me, mean and more than anything that we understand the implications of sure. using that form or not using and it. And that's the importance of someone with experience or someone who is aligned to themselves with someone with experience Absolutely. I mean, that's really really important yeah so and then once you so you know you have that pre-listing time then you have the beginning of the listing right where there's the marketing piece of it and then you have the offer comes in and so the next piece is negotiations and um i think there, there is a myth that he who is the roughest and toughest wins sure and i do not believe that that is true because if if you have somebody who says well i'm a real bulldog and they act like a bulldog, it's really can translate to being a bully. And what that does is it actually pushes people away. Even on the other side of that transaction, you know, if you're being <laughs> difficult and you're being honestly kind of mean and you're not, you, you know, you're, <laughs> you're being an antagonist, 
that is going to somehow that is going to get back to my client and that that client is going to have to decide whether they want to work with that person and it, it's yeah and that's the reality this is a a, a short term relationship a yeah. real estate transaction can take 30 to 45 days normal I yeah mean, that's normal yeah and so if it goes longer and they they become um, very influential over the other the other over the other party sure so I think it's really important that you want someone who strives to have win-win um, situations that they they are looking for ways for both parties to win um, they are looking for a way to the whole group is a team so if, if I'm looking at the whole transaction the buyer's agent is part of the team the buyers part of the team the seller the selling agent or the the listing agent the lender we're all part of one team and if we start to treat each other like we're on opposite teams then that can start to have friction and that friction can really um, basically break down the entire transaction sure and you know and I hate to say this but I do believe that kindness and understanding and generosity is one of the best ways to win a negotiation now if I need to be tough right if you need to kind of set down the law you do that but you've You've built relationship and, and kindness and and um, well, and I think it's a mutual respect, and you don't have to be a pushover to respect no. the other no. individual. And the reality is, is that if we can't come to terms, then nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so just because I'm going to come in and be like, yeah, this is the way that it's going to be, if that's not if that's going to polarize people and push people away, the deal isn't getting done, and nobody gets what they want. Yeah, exactly. And and the great thing is, is that we've got a lot of great agents in Spokane. Like I. There are some that I'm just so glad when I when I finish a transaction and they, they've just they've worked hard, we've communicated well, everybody comes out of it feeling good about what they what they have accomplished. Even even when there's like negotiation and you know, I need you to fix the sewer, I don't want to fix the sewer. Well, how can we work this out? Yeah. You know, there's always gonna be that kind of stuff. But the more you have um what's what you know, y- y- you don't want things grinding to a halt, right? You gotta need, grease the wheels. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. You gotta grease those wheels. <laughs> so then, the last thing that I would have to say, I mean, I didn't put this down, but I do think that someone who's creative is great. Creativity is really important when it comes to real estate transactions. Yeah, for sure. You know, you, a lot of people will see this something come up and they'll go, "Well, that's a dead end." Mm, is it a dead end or is it a hurdle that we can get over? And that's the difference. You or wanna... under or around. <laughs> yeah, or, something. I mean, the, the reality is, is we're trying to get from where we are to where we want to be. Something's in the way. Yeah. And sometimes it really is a brick wall and there's nothing we can do. But there are times where if we can work together, we can come up with a solution. So creativity is important. And then just at the end of the day, a hard worker. You just, yeah. you want someone who works hard. And that, you know what, that (laughs) is a really important thing to identify because I think that when it happens in our industry cyclically, there's Mm. this this cycle of people that just kind of rush in because the markets are hot and everybody's hearing about it on TV or the radio or on Facebook and like, man, that sounds like some, that sounds like easy money. Two years ago, we only had 1,500 people. And we have over 2,500 agents now. or agents. people in the MLS. Mm-hmm. So and, and so you look at that, it, it doesn't mean that everybody that's getting in now is lazy, but there are some lazy agents that are getting in because it appears to be easy money. And if you don't have someone that's going to work hard, the brick wall is going to be insurmountable. Yeah. yeah. So let me, let me give you an example. I want to just go back a little bit about the bullying thing and stuff because <clears throat> I recently had a transaction uh, where we where we wanted to wait and that's you know i i said to my clients listen i think we should wait a few days and that was and they wanted to yeah it's wait before we take an offer and we we were able to um get a lot of showings in and um we got a lot of offers but at the very beginning on day one we got or maybe it was day one and a half so like the next day i think we had four offers um almost immediately and one of them said we're expiring tonight you better answer us tonight. I mean, he was kind of nice about it, you know, but he was definitely saying to us, hey, you, um, we're going to be gone in five. We're not going to wait five days, so give us an answer now. And so one half of, the, of the, the selling couple said, maybe we should take this offer. And the other half said, maybe we should wait. And I just said, listen, you can do what you want, but I'll tell you what, if you let this market work for you, this is, this is a ploy by this agent to push us and bully us into taking his offer now 
But I'm telling you, if we wait a little bit, and we ended up getting 12 offers and a, a, a better offer than this one. And this person came back later with, came a, better back offer, later with a better offer almost the day before. Yeah, so and here's not, and, and it doesn't mean that that buyer's agent wasn't doing no, their best no, for their client. Absolutely. And, you know, if they're not being a jerk, it doesn't mean that they're going to completely push the transaction to the, you know, sideline yes. the whole thing. Yes. But as the listing agent representing the seller, right. you're like, listen, clients, I think based on my experience yes. that if we hold, it's going to work for you in Exactly. And so that's the, you know, that kind of experience and understanding and being able to go, I know we want to do this, but I re here's what I feel strongly. And then they can make that decision. Um, it, it turned out to be a, a great thing for the client. So back to the working hard, mm -hmm. like, you know, there are times when I put in 12 hour days and you have to have someone who's now, I hopefully we don't have to do that every single day because that it gets tiring. Um, but you want someone with a get or done attitude, mm -hmm. you know, someone who is a good agent, who's not afraid to be the squeaky wheel, who's not afraid to be a babysitter of the transaction. Yeah, you gotta because do that. that's the thing is that uh, some people just go, well, that shouldn't be my responsibility to figure that out. And you kind of go, I, I understand that. But do you want the deal to close? Because if you do, somebody has to make sure that thing is happening. Yeah. So and can you just talk really quick before mm -hmm. we move on? You were talking about forms. You were talking about being a chemist of forms. Can you talk about a form that we used to laugh at thinking no one would ever use? <laughs> I know what it is. It's the 22 AD, AD. which stands for? Additional down. So this was a... Additional so down. Additional down. So basically, this is like an insurance policy for sellers. And here's what it means. It means that if... Um, the appraisal comes in low. So let's just use some numbers. Let's say it's a uh, $200,000 is what we're purchasing the price house for. And, uh, but as a, as a market goes up, right? Sold properties are, are down here. So if, if you're on, if you're listening to this on the radio, if you can think of a line that is going up and sold properties are always in the past. So that means that they can be further down um, than where we are right now. So maybe we're paying 200, but we don't have any comps to support that because of the upward trajectory. Right. Okay. So a 22 AD says, it says it's from the buyer. It says, buyer, I guarantee you that I will pay X amount of dollars. So let's just say it's a big number like 10,000, which I actually have seen that recently. $10,000 additional down if it, if the appraisal comes in low. So that means if the appraisal comes in at 190, you don't skip a beat because that's... Because they've already said they're going to bring in the $10,000. The buyer says I'm bringing the $10,000 in. So this was a, a form that they made because Seattle's market was going crazy. And I remember I did laugh and I said, well, pff, we're never going to be using that form here in Spokane. <laughs> Lo and behold, this is a form that now comes up in every transaction, whether I'm working with a buyer or a seller, period. We're talking about this form. Sure. I'm trying to get that form if I'm on the listing side, and I'm talking to my buyers about that form. Now, can we talk about the form for just a second? You can, but I, and I want to make sure that, that the importance of this isn't just the form. It's the understanding that you're advising your client, you as the seller... Just because an offer has a higher purchase price right. does not mean it is the strongest and best offer because if the appraisal comes in low and that buyer has no capacity, so if they offered two fifty in your $200,000 example with 3% down and no additional down payment yeah. and the appraisal comes in at one ninety, your seller just lost some money. Yes. And they and they may have had, let's just, let's just push that out a little bit further. So they offered two hundred and fifty. Uh, another offer is two thirty, and they've got a, a ten or twenty thousand dollar twenty two AD. The question is, would you rather have a higher price with no additional down insurance, if you will, or would you rather have a lower purchase price with an an insurance policy of a twenty two AD? And most most sellers would say, yeah, I'd rather have the insurance policy. I'd rather have this assurance. Now, at the beginning of the, that's yeah. the thing, is at the beginning of the transaction, not later in the transactions, before we even, like, go under contract. So, it's a, it's a good form. Now, we are not going to talk to buyers too much here, but just know this. It does mean that you're paying more than a bank believes the house is worth. So, be aware of that. Anytime you're bringing a 22 AD in, you're risking the fact that you're going to start your life in that house Upside down. Upside down according to Just an appraiser. Saying. And I think that, you know, again, we can argue about this or discuss this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reality is this, that 
you could be paying more than the house is worth, or there just aren't comps up at that That's price. That's here's, here's I used to say this in my banking days all day long. A mm-hmm. house is what someone's willing to pay for it. True. But you also have to, I as a, a responsible uh, person representing a buyer, I need to make sure they understand all the risks and what they're what they're doing, Absolutely. what they're saying, and we've talked about this before too, and like, the possibility that the market could could go, go backwards, down. Yeah. which means that if you're paying more than the appraised yeah. value today, you better not be planning on moving out in 24 months. That's right. So that is correct. Well, that is all I have on that. All right, that's I'm good. Sure that was really good and helpful. <laughs> I and, hope it's and helpful. Bottom line: when you're interviewing an agent to help you sell your home, just ask them some questions to figure out if they have a real marketing plan, if they're going to be able to advise you on the contracts and how creative they are in being able to structure a transaction because there are always hurdles in a transaction, period. Yep. That's what we get paid to do. All right, Matt, I'm going to hit it back over to you because you're going to talk about some numbers. Last week we didn't have time to do numbers. Because uh, we got a little bit too into uh, the history of swimming pools. Swimming pools. We <laughs> talked more about swimming pools than real estate numbers. Let's jump into the numbers for Spokane's real estate market. Okay. So right now, mm-hmm. as of this recording, there are 606 active listings. <laughs> that's not very many. Single family and condo under an acre. That's how we spec- You know, that's the search criteria that we have. Uh-huh. That is, when you, when working on an average number of transactions that have closed every month for the last year, okay. which is 701, still not a big number, that is 0.86 months of supply. Okay. I'm not going to re-explain that. You can go back to past episodes if you want to understand So less supply. than a month. Less, less than, than a month. month of supply. So that is huge. So I'm, we're gonna, I've got a couple of images here that are probably worthless on the YouTube um, channel because they're just like printouts that I'm going to be looking at, but we will post these on our Facebook and you should come, you should take a look at it, especially this active listing graph um, that the association of realtors put out. So normally in the last two years, so this is a three year kind of comparison of what's Mm -hmm. gone on in average um, active listings on our multiple listing service in 2018 and 2019 summer months have a tendency to increase Right. The active listing volume. Right? Absolutely. Like people yep. are trying to sell in, in the summer. Mm-hmm. Spring and summer. Spring and summer. So here is what has happened in 2020. Okay. Is it began going down. In May was our peak. And then Ju- June just... was a little bit lower. And July is a little bit lower. And August is lower yet. So what's happening is we're having a real supply. Just, and it's never like that. <clears throat> Ever. But, I mean, I didn't go back through all the history of time. But in the last three yeah, years, this not... is the first time... In the graph here and the first time in the last, I mean, I don't remember it ever being like this. So here's what's happening. We're having a real supply strain, uh, meaning that we have buyer demand. So let's talk about our sold listings. So sold in the last six months, we had 3,953. Okay. Let me compare that to the same period of time last year, which was 4,130. We, I mean, whatever that is, like a couple hundred, not even 200 difference. Yep. More than 200 sold. difference. Okay. And yet our inventory is down over 48%. 48.4% decrease in active inventory from right. July of 2019 to July of 2020. So what you're saying is that we've sold almost the same amount of properties, but the inventory is ex- half. Is half. Can I, can I make yeah. a prediction? Uh, so a Matt prediction. and I, not a prediction. <laughs> um, Matt and I were talking about this earlier, and I was, I was like, okay. So I asked him for the sold numbers. And all of a sudden, I realized, oh my gosh, what is what this is saying is that this the buyers have so few options that buyers are having to compromise on what they want. And of course, we've got lots of buyers who are having unfulfilled dreams of home ownership. Sure, um, that's another thing that's true. But also, even the people that are purchasing, they're they're compromising in some way. They're either compromising on what they're getting in the actual physical house where they're paying a lot more than they thought they were going to have to pay for a lot less Yeah, in a sure. house. So, sure. so again, supply and demand is making it crazy out there right now. Um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about affordability because interestingly enough, affordability has not changed because interest rates are so low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so a couple other quick numbers. Our median sold price in the last six months... 287,364 
Can I just tell you what our median active list price is right now? I'm interested. Three hundred and seventy-eight thousand five hundred. Whoa! Through almost four hundred thousand dollars active list price median. Wow, that's a big jump, that's isn't a it? Big jump. Now that doesn't mean that's where they're all going to sell, but as you can see, when you have Again. almost three quarters of a month of inventory is all you've got out there, and the buyer demand hasn't changed. Yeah. Well, People that, are going to pay more. Well, not just that, but that's why. And so even bringing up the appraisal thing, um, the appraisals have been able to kind of keep up until recently. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had at least two low appraisals my own self. And so I think that that's, that is going to be starting to be a real struggle with, you know, yeah, interesting. So here's what I want to do kind of as we're toward the end of our show here is I want to take these numbers and I want to apply them to more of kind of an economic picture, a bigger economic picture, okay. not like a big national economic picture, sure. but a little more local. So Steve Scranton, I've talked about him before. He's the chief investment officer and, and economist at Washington Trust. He's kind of my economist crush, I'll be honest. Okay. Like okay. He's, he's Good a to super know. smart dude. Okay. <clears throat> um, but I want to reference some of his recent thoughts on housing <clears throat> and, and, and also on the economy in general. So we've heard the economy recovery put into the form of shapes, right? So a V recovery is like down and back up. I actually had not heard this until today, so I'm glad you're explaining it. So there have been talks about, well, this is, we shut the economy down, we're going to reopen the economy back up, which means it's, it's a V, right? It drops and it comes right back up. Okay, yep. Um, the only thing that has seen that is the stock market. Okay. And so it without, dropped off dramatically and, and then, then it shot come right back, back up. Okay. And that, without going into a bunch of the weeds on that, is really because the Federal Reserve is just pumping money into bonds, which means people are moving out of that into stocks. And okay. so, I mean, there's a whole conversation out there that is way above my pay grade on that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that the stock market has, has seen that. Mm -hmm. But according to Steve, and, and we're seeing this, it's more of a square root shape, okay. which kind of is that like a little bit up, drops back down comes up and then flattens. Right. And so, I mean, you can just Google the shape of a square root if you want to see what that looks like yeah. if you're not familiar with that. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. We've seen that we saw a little bit of a bump in the economy. It kind of has, as virus has resurged, it kind of has come back down and now right. it's appearing to be more flat in a lot of indicators. So what does that mean for real estate? I mean, real estate's kind of been the light on the top of the hill, if you will, for mm -hmm. the economy it, right. across the board, but it really has been very strong. And kind of here's our prediction on real estate is that it is single family is going to continue to be really, really strong, mm -hmm. um, at least in this foreseeable future. Right. And I think that part, like even just the coronavirus COVID-19 thing right now is helping fuel that because not only do you have the millennials that we talked about at the very beginning of 2020 mm -hmm. that were fueling buying yep. power, but now you have people that are in multifamily apartments that yeah. are like, you know, I don't really like the idea of being in this elevator with a bunch of strangers they every don't time want I common, have to come home. Yeah, common hallways. You, every time you walk out of your house, you've got to so think about it. So you've got those individuals mm -hmm. that are getting into the, the market, and it's so it's really just fueling demand. Yeah. Um, and... I guess we can shift also over to talking about affordability. So here's kind of my my cry from the top of the hill here is that if you're a fence sitter, you need to get off the fence and make up your mind because his, the historically low interest rates, even though our prices have been going up right. as drastically as they have, and the other graph that I didn't show you is that you know our median prices are up almost 12% year over year, and yet with no income change, like yeah. the average income in Spokane has stayed the same, affordability has actually gone up. Yeah, because your interest rate, what was it we heard today? At, at, we're talking a, a, couple 15, days ago. a 15 year, is it 2.28? Like Something like that. There That's changes insane. all the time, but the reality is, is that because interest rates have been pushed down so far, uh, the affordability is still there and the Fed's propping it up and they're doing it, it they do it every every time there's a presidential election cycle they want to like make sure that everything's as good as it can be sure. so that in combination with trying to keep the economy from completely tanking and feel like they're have value as the Federal Reserve they're right. doing things to so my prediction is that this is going to this will end if not before November it will end after November 
Mm. And so if you're sitting on the fence, now is a good time to make a decision to buy or sell uh, because things could change in the not too far future. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I think that's, that's all I've got for everybody today. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Uh, check out our Facebook page or 509-62-HOUSE to get a hold of us. Thanks. Bye-bye. See ya.